I haven't had a chance to thank my mother for bringing me to the United States of America. When I was nine, I moved to New Jersey. When I was 10, I started my first job. Started delivering newspapers, because I didn't have the life I had in Peru, so I had to work for what I wanted. When I was 11, I bought a Commodore 64. Commodore 64 came with print shop. When I was 12, I started a school newsletter, which later on became the town newspaper. Started the town newspaper because my mom said, you're working, you're slaving away, doing all this work for the school, why not just do it for the entire town? And for the next 25 years, we have the town newspaper. During that time, I started to learn the power of bringing a community together, the power of media, the power, how we were connecting the community with a small publication. We weren't making any money, but we were certainly bringing the community together. 15 years later, started an outdoor advertising company, Fuel Outdoor, one of the larger outdoor advertising companies in the country today. With Fuel, I was able to learn the power of media na nationally. We were watching brands like Absolute, HBO, Showtime, Apple. We were watching these companies grow, spend hundreds of millions of dollars in watching all the impact that they were creating. And then one day, we had the opportunity to work with a brand new bank, a bank that said, we want you guys to help us paint the town red. In the next six months, we want people to feel and think that Bank of America has been around forever. I bet some of you don't even know how long Bank of America has been around. Some of you probably don't even know where it came from. Oh, you know that Bank of America is now one of the largest banks in the country. And this is the power of media. The power of media, it was so impactful how after six months of doing this campaign, everyone thought the bank was there. It's been around. It, it, it was incredible. It was really incredible. And that's when I started to realize that we could utilize some of this media to help create impact. I started to get involved in a bunch of charities, nonprofits, and all these organizations and said, how do we leverage some of the remnant space, some of the empty space to help drive impact, help create opportunities to those that can't afford the space? And as, as, we, as I started to do this, I started to inadvertently create a brand in the space because now everyone was coming to me. Everyone was saying, hey, Serge, I have a charity. I have an organization. Can you please help me out? Just give me a billboard. Give me something in San Francisco, Miami, New York. And it, you know, obviously, you, you can't please everyone. You, you can't give away your company. We have investors. We need to make money with the space. And so, but what I started to realize was, was, again, that impact that we were creating and how much there was a need for that, for that space. Then, a few years later, I had the honor of being selected to sit on the United Nations Global Entrepreneurship Council. We were brought together, a bunch of entrepreneurs, to help the United Nations Foundation with their messaging, with their branding. We were able to put together a campaign, a campaign that when we all got together, we just said, let's call some of our friends. Let's see who can help us, who has empty space, some of the digital space. Everyone has space. This is, this is last year. I mean, this is, nobody's, nobody's selling 100% of their space. So lo and behold, 30 days later, we put together one of the largest nonprofit campaigns ever put together, a billion impressions, a billion impressions. What was more insane was the fact that we were able to grow the United Nations impact, a measurable impact, by 30%. And this was just so incredible. It was, it was absolutely incredible because at the time, in August, there was a bill in the Senate being passed, or being introduced, to stop the funding of the United Nations. They wanted to stop the funding because they thought the United Nations was irrelevant to Americans. 22% of the United Nations funding comes, comes from the United States. And they wanted to readdress the funding. So one day, one of the United Nations Foundation members was walking through Times Square, and he's pleading a television executive and saying, please, don't do a television show about the irrelevancy. You're going to kill the brand. You're going to kill us. You're going to destroy us. You're going to kill jobs. Why are you doing this? Please. They're walking through Times Square. And as they walk through Times Square, there it goes. The sign changes. Then the next sign changes. And as they're cutting across through the crowds, another sign changes. The Girl Up campaign, a campaign that's dedicated on educating American young women to be global. 
an organization that's dedicated to help America grow. And this t television executive, all of a sudden, you know, it's a kind of chilling to tell you this because it's like, what are the chances, right, that like you're walking through Times Square and the sign changes? You think that it was organized, and this is a, a campaign that nobody spent any money on. We were able to leverage all relationships to make sure that the Girl Up campaign was seen throughout the country. Not only was that, did that create that impact, but also it did, the bill never passed. The bill never made it anywhere. So we were able to save the funding inadvertently just by coming together, bringing together eight young entrepreneurs to see what value we could bring with, with our relationships in the media space. I was so profoundly affected by this. We were able to change people's lives, save jobs. We were able to affect the way people perceive the brand, the way people perceive the way government. There was a bill in, Con in the Senate. We were able to change this, and we, we all just did it by making a few phone calls. And that's when I started to realize there's a bigger picture here. There's a much bigger picture here. You know, we're in a recession, we're in a down economy. There's so much media being created every single day. Media is born every day, and if you don't use it, you've lost it, especially digital. I can't sell you, I can't give you Sunday's New York Times, the back page, because it's useless today. So if you're not using the media, you're not taking advantage of an opportunity to brand and create impact. So started to think about this and said, what if media became the new currency? What if this empty space was this new currency that was put together under foundation to help all these organizations around the world, not just locally, to help give them this media, to help deliver their messages, what they're passionate about. Nobody joins an organization or a foundation or nonprofit and you don't donate money not because you don't believe in it, because obviously you either know somebody that had a disease or you know somebody that lives in Africa or you're passionate about helping change the world. We all want to change the world. Imagine if you had access to that media and money was no longer an issue. Imagine if media was that new currency. What would you do? How would you use it? I bet you're all thinking and saying, wow, Sergio, I have this organization I sit on the board of. Hey, can we get some of that space? Where do you have the space? And, and that's the whole point, that the space is available. And if you had access to it, everyone here, I'm sure, knows somebody that sits on the board of an organization in a nonprofit. Again, the problem is, the organizations are mismatched. If you donate $10,000, you want 100% of that to go towards using it towards the cause. If I spent 50% of that towards marketing and advertising, which every nonprofit needs, every charity, every organization that is focused on social change and social impact change, and if that money was spent on advertising, you would no longer donate to them. You would never even, you wouldn't even think twice. That would be the last time you give them any money. And that's the disconnect that's, that happens. The media is out there. The media exists, but we're just not using it correctly. So we decided to form a foundation that would allow us to aggregate all this media and, be, and put it together to help drive social impact, help drive change, help make it available to those that need it. What would you do if you had the space? How many problems would you solve? What if charities had access to media at no cost, with the currency being the actual media, the empty remnant media that every day goes to waste? There's not enough money to solve every problem. But there is enough media. Thank you very much. <laughs>